Opening day is about a week away, and there are some interesting prospect pitchers who have done a lot of work to bolster their opening day case. Let's talk about it. You are Locked On MLB Prospects, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Yes, welcome on in to Locked On MLB Prospects, your home for all things minor league baseball. I'm your host, Lindsey Crosby, editor-in-chief at Bravestoday.com, freelance baseball writer and podcaster. Thank you for making this your first listen. Every single day, we're proudly part of the Locked On Podcast Network, where it's your team every day. And today, we're looking at some of the pro- prospect pitchers who have done some done the hard work to improve their opening day case, and one that slipped up between when I wrote this and when I recorded this. So, uh, first guy I want to talk about, left-hand pitcher Matthew Liebertor of the St. Louis Cardinals. We brought him up from time to time before, 2018 first-rounder out of high school. Got some time in the bigs last year. Uh, not enough to lose prospect eligibility, 34 and two-thirds innings, but struggled a bit statistically both in AAA Memphis and in the bigs. So, 22 games started in Memphis last year. 5-1-7 ERA and 115 innings pitched. 116 strikeouts, so 9.1 per nine. 241 walks, 3.2 per nine, and 16 home runs allowed. When he got in the bigs last year, some spot starts here and there. Nine appearances, seven starts, 34 and two-thirds innings. 5-9-7 ERA. With 28 strikeouts, so 7.3 per nine, to 18 walks, 4.7 per nine. The, 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 the strikeouts per nine dropped by almost two. The walks per nine went up by about one and a half, and he gave up five home runs. This spring, he's looked better and more effective in his granted small sample size of 10 innings. It's a 180 ERA, nine strikeouts to one walk and one home run. Opponent quality of 7.0. Go back to Monday's show. For first segment, we talk all about the opponent quality measure and kind of how it works. But higher is better. 10 is an MLB lineup. So he played decent players in spring training. The key for Matthew Liebertor here, uh, the improvement that we've seen in spring, and the reason why I think it's going to stick is around his velocity. So he throws both a four-seam and a two-seam fastball. And last year... It sat 92, 93, could maybe touch 95. And the four-seamer specifically got rocked last year. Opposing hitters, batting average of 364 with a slugging percentage of 673 on the four-seam fastball. You know, he's 6'5", 200, so he's a taller, slender guy. Didn't have all of the velocity. It's a high three-quarter slot, so... The approach angle is good, but the velocity wasn't really behind it. This spring, he's sitting 95 with both the four-seamer and the two-seamer, uh, uh, touching 97 or so. And so that extra velocity, that extra couple ticks in forcing velocity, to me, feel like they have made a lot of difference. Because now, you have more variation between all of the different pitches. So he threw, as a reminder, you're setting guys up with these fastballs. The four-seamer obviously would stay up in the zone. Had a little bit of cut to it, which was nice movement. The two-seamer didn't sink a ton, but just had a lot of late run to it. So that's that's why we kind of grouped them together. Uh, The whole thing was based around the curveball. It's a one-to-seven curveball. uh, Tons of spin to it. Sits in the mid-70s. I mean, moves like a foot and a half uh, vertically and like a foot horizontally. So the kind of pitch where coming out of that high three-quarter slot from a guy who's 6'5", there's a ton of movement. It just has to, the issue you have is there's that, there's a gyro slider in the mid-80s, and there's a changeup in the mid-80s. And a lot of your pitches, with the exception of the curveball, a lot of Matthew Liebertor's pitches were all in that mid-80s to low-90s range. And so if you're, 
if you're watching for uh, for that gyro slider, if you're watching for a change, which kind of looked like the two-seamer anyway, uh, it was easier to catch up on the fastball if you weren't ready for it, and then vice versa. If you were keyed up for the fastball, it wasn't that much of a change to get one of the off speeds. So getting that extra velocity, it feels like he's working a lot better. Uh, I do still think, just kind of based on what the rotation looks like in St. Louis, if you check it out right now, it's like Adam Wainwright, Miles Mikolas, Jordan Montgomery, Steven Matz, and Jack Flaherty. I think there's still a scenario where he starts off in AAA Memphis. Obviously, you need more than five starters to get through a year. Uh, he does have Rookie of the Year odds, so FanDuel does agree with me. I think you see Matthew Levertor in the bigs sooner rather than later, and I think he'll be more effective than you've seen in the past because of the improvement with the velocity of that fastball, I actually think he'll end up being probably the most fantasy-relevant starting pitcher in this St. Louis rotation by the end of the year. Just something where you look at who you've got. Miles Mikolas can eat innings, doesn't get a ton of strikeouts. Uh, Jordan Montgomery has not looked great this spring. Jack Flaherty hasn't been healthy since 2020. Adam Wainwright, uh, being a little bit older, there's been questions about the velocity and things like that. I think he's going to be the most fantasy relevant pitcher in this rotation by midpoint of the season, probably. The other guy, a lot of people are surprised that he might be an option for opening day, but Bryce Miller of the Mariner, 6'2", 180. He was a 2021 fourth rounder out of Texas A&M. And last year, he went from low A all the way up into half the year in double A, Arkansas, by the end of the year. 316 ERA in 27 total minor league starts last year. 133 and two-thirds innings, 163 strikeouts for Bryce Miller. So 11 per nine to 46 walks, 3.1 per nine, and 10 home runs allowed. This spring so far, he has an ERA of two in nine innings pitched with nine strikeouts, three walks, and one home run. Opponent quality of 8.1. And I think the scenario here. When you look at what Bryce Miller does, one, I love the pitch mix for Bryce Miller. And that's because it's like the fastball is very, very good. I mean, it's a 70 grade fastball. Sits 90, 697, can touch 100 miles an hour very easily. Uh, gets a lot of like, has like kind of, it kind of explodes out of the hand and just gets on you in a hurry. Uh, but to go along with that, he has two distinct sliders. So he throws both, like, and I think the sliders come out plus pitches. He throws both the horizontal sweeper, and then he also throws a gyro slider. So the gyro slider gives you some vertical drop. The, horizontal, like, the sweeper obviously gives you the horizontal movement. The fastball stays up in the zone with great velocity. They all come out of the same slot. Really like that. Also has a change sits in the mid-80s, gives you a little bit of a different directional uh, movement, a little horizontal movement to the other side. Uh, it doesn't always control it that well. Sometimes it'll it'll just fly out of the hand and go go high up in the zone. Uh, and then a curveball that's eh, fringy, whatever, it's fine. But he throws a ton of strikes. He's got great velo. Uh, I think there is an avenue here because, again, Another situation where Seattle's got plenty of starters. We talked on Monday about how just about all of these starters have added new pitches and they are looking more and more uh, deep. Like this rotation, Luis Castillo, Logan Gilbert, Robbie Ray, George Kirby, Marco Gonzalez, looks like a very good rotation. I think there's room for Bryce Miller to open up the year out of the bullpen. I think that that's, that's a scenario, and they've acknowledged, like Scott Service has said, like, is he a starter? Is he a reliever? Uh, a lot of it played, like, I saw a lot of good things from him. Uh, and, and Miller said, like, obviously, whatever he has to do to help the team, I do think there's a scenario, and I'm not saying he's Spencer Strider, but I think there's a scenario similar to what Spencer Strider did, where he opened up in Atlanta's bullpen last year, somebody got hurt, he moved in, into the rotation, and then he absolutely delivered last year. So let's watch for Bryce Miller as Seattle is wrapping up spring training and getting ready to break and head north. 
see if he makes the team. I think he might, and if he does, he might be somebody who breaks out this year, similar to how Spencer Strider did last year. In just a minute, I want to get to talking about pitchers out in the West. Let's talk about Brandon Fott, and then the curious case of Chase Silseth, and maybe are we cursing guys on this show? But first, today's episode is brought to you by our friends at FanDuel, the NCAA tournament's heating up. Now is the perfect time to download FanDuel. It's America's number one sports book, and new customers get a no sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets back if your first bet doesn't win. So download the FanDuel Sportsbook app. Safe, secure, super easy to use. You can go in there, obviously, bet on just about anything. It can be, I mean, for basketball, it's it's not only uh, the, the core markets, the spread, uh, the money line, things like that. You can bet on points scored and all of that. But looking at the MLB odds, I've noticed some interesting movement in the American League and, rookie, and National League Rookie of the Year races. So Matthew Liebertor is in the National League book, 4,200, plus 4,200. Brandon Fott is in at plus 4,800. He's coming up next. But after the great showing at the World Baseball Classic, Matsutaka Yoshida has moved up to second best odds in the American League at plus 600, right behind Gunnar Henderson at plus 240. And Anthony Volpe, who there's been a lot of talk about might make the Yankees out of spring training, has moved to plus 800. When you look in the National League, you went from Corbin Carroll was your consensus number one favorite to win Rookie of the Year to now he is tied with Jordan Walker of the Cardinals, who we talked about yesterday, at plus 400. So... Download the FanDuel app. Uh, you can get a no-sweat first bet up to $1,000 in bonus bets when you go to FanDuel.com slash locked on. That's FanDuel.com slash locked on to learn more. Make every moment more with FanDuel, the official sports book of the Locked On Podcast Network. Okay, so Brandon fought of the Arizona Diamondbacks. He got sent to minor league camp. He got reassigned. So we know he's not breaking the year, like breaking like breaking camp with the Diamondbacks big league team. But I've been really impressed with his spring so far. So reminder, 2025th rounder out of Bellarmine, which is in Kentucky. Made that mistake last time. 29 games last year between AA Amarillo and AAA Reno. 3.83 ERA and 167 innings pitched. 218 strikeouts led all of the minor leagues in strikeouts. And it came out to 11.7 strikeouts per nine. That was the most strikeouts anybody's had in a minor league season since 2001. Every time we talk about this guy, I got to mention that. It's an it's amazing stat there. 33 walks last year, so 1.8 per nine and 28 home runs allowed. The ball flies in both Reno and Amarillo. You leave a mistake, it is gone. So, 28 home runs. But again, he also pitched a ton of innings. He pitched, I think it was 167 innings last year. So, it's actually not that bad on a home run per nine basis. Spring training so far, 375 ERA in 12 innings. 15 strikeouts to four walks. He's given up one home run. But, uh, I think he's going to be up this year for the Diamondbacks. The issue, the reason he's not up right now, and they specifically addressed this, and they said it is because of tenure. There are so many guys ahead of him, young players in this system, like Adre Jamison, Ryan Nelson, left-hand pitcher Tommy Henry. They literally, when they were asked about it, they say they said the words incumbency. They're already on the 40-man roster. They've already been in the bigs this year. And so because of that, they are the first options that the team is going to. But I do feel Brandon Fott has the highest ceiling of any of those guys. And when you look at the rotation, you're pretty confident in the top one or two. You've got Zach Gallen, you've got Merrill Kelly, and then after that, you have Zach Davies, Madison Bumgarner, and then you start getting some of the kids. Dre Jameson, Ryan Nelson, Tommy Henry, all in there fighting for that fifth spot. And I think Brandon Fott's going to eventually be up and be one of the better options here. So the thing here, the fastball is the star of this show. It is a plus fastball. It has both cut and carry up in the zone, which is not a very easy thing to do. 
uh, sits around 90, like this spring, instead of sitting 93, it's been sitting about 95, can touch 97, 98, still has a low 80 slider that's plus with that heavy, heavy sweep to it. Just tons of horizontal movement. And then the changeup is, I, it's called above average by a lot of places. It feels like a plus changeup to me. It it tunnels really well off of the fastball and then runs arm side, so the other direction from everything else. So it's a nice horizontal game between the fastball, which is a little bit of cut, the slider with a ton of sweep, and then the changeup running to the arm side. Has a curveball, still kind of, it's one of those early in account, steal strike kind of things. Uh, if he starts to throw it too much, they can pick up on the tendency and crush it, but for the most part, I think it'll be fine to kind of balance the way he has it now. And then just pounds the strike zone. And that's what it looked like in spring too, just pounding the strike zone, throwing tons of strikes. He The delivery, he repeats it really well. So he's got the durability. I really feel like a, a lot of the projections are uh, that he's going to be a number three or so. I think he could be a number two. I really like what I see from Brandon Fott. Really impressed with him. The other guy I want to talk about, and the reason why this show may be a little bit cursed, obviously the show we put out yesterday talked about Von Grissom versus Braden Shoemake in the third segment for uh, the starting shortstop job in Atlanta. Between when we recorded it and uh, when it released on Tuesday morning, the Braves optioned both of those guys to AAA. This next guy, same issue. We, t- we, we put in the rundown about Chase Silseth and the fantastic job he had done this spring. And among some of the stats I had for you was three spring training games, 10 innings pitched. He had a 3.60 ERA with 12 strikeouts to two walks and one home run. And then Chase Silseth goes out against the Cincinnati Reds and gets absolutely destroyed. Chase Silseth had two perfect innings to open the outing. He only made it three and a third. He gave up one run in the third, and then he gave up seven runs in the fourth. Just kind of lost the rhythm, was leaving a lot of pitches up in the zone, and the Reds were just teeing off on these things. And so we had him all written up. We were excited about him. His ERA in spring went from a 3-6-0 ERA in 10 innings to an 8-10 ERA in 13 and a third innings. He was competing for that sixth uh, starting spot. The Angels want to go to a six-man rotation early in the year because they want to kind of minimize some of the workload on some of these pitchers. They feel good about Otani, Tyler Anderson, Patrick Sandoval, Reed Detmers, Jose Suarez. But to keep Otani as healthy as possible uh, and to hopefully get more depth out of the starters so they can ease some of the workload in the bullpen, they were going to go with a six-man rotation, and Silseth was one of the favorites for that sixth spot. Now, you don't have to name one until April 12th, which is the first time that they will use that guy. It's the 12th game of the season, but Silseth may have kind of blown some of those opportunities. So uh, the actual arsenal itself is really good. I just think he doesn't necessarily optimize it well. And it looked like he was doing a little better job this spring of using it. So the best pitch for Chase Silseth right now is the fastball. It's a plus pitch. He throws it uh, like it sits around 96, 97, can touch 99. I think I saw a 100 from it at some point in time this season. And then he's got both a slider and a curveball. Uh, The slider, I'd call it probably above average, sits in the mid 80s. A lot of like tight break to it. And then he has a 12 to 6, so a vertical breaking curveball in the low 80s. And then he throws a splitter, you know, a split change in the upper 80s or so. And he's added a cutter. And the issue that I had last year for Chase Silseth was he threw the fastball about 40% of the time, which is fine. He threw the slider 21% of the time. But... The splitter, the split change, was the worst of his pitches, and he threw it 27% of the time, whereas the curveball was like 5%. And so I I wanted him to get away from the splitter 
and either throw something else more or come up with a new pitch. He's kind of done both. He brought a cutter in. He's been throwing the cutter more, and it took over quite a bit of that usage of the change. And then he upped the curveball usage some. Looked really good. And so I was excited to think, okay, it looks like he could be the sixth starter. And then again, he goes out and he gets absolutely rocked by the Reds. So probably going to start off in AAA Salt Lake. Again, you don't have to make your decision on that guy until April 16th. That's the first time you're going to use that sixth starter. So you have the ability to, to give him some time to get a start or so in AAA, you know, you probably do one more in minor league camp and then in AAA before you have to decide on that sixth starter. But provided he can show that that Reds outing was just a blip, I think Chase Silseth uh, can be helpful to the organization this season as they try to make the playoffs. In just a minute, I want to look at the uh, at two prospects in Atlanta who are competing for the fifth starting spot. We'll do that next right here on Locked on MLB Prospects. Okay, so in Atlanta, it was kind of the the common understanding and assumption that your start your fifth starter was probably going to be Ian Anderson. He started game 3 of the World Series for you in 2021, struggled last year with effectiveness of the fastball, trying to command the fastball, and so guys could just ignore the fastball cuz he couldn't land it for a strike and they could tee off on his fantastic changeup. He got option to Triple A because your ERA leaders among qualified pitchers in all of Major League Baseball were Jared Schuster and Dylan Dodd. Uh, both lefty prospects for Atlanta contending for that spot. Uh, Dodd has a, point oh six, a, a 0. 0.69 ERA. Schuster has a 0. 0.71. So kind of came into a little bit different here. Schuster was drafted first, 2020 first rounder out of Wake Forest. 6'3", 210. Got 27 games last year between double-A and triple-A. 329 ERA and 139 in the third innings. 145 strikeouts for Jared Schuster, so 9.4 per nine. 238 walks, 2.5 walks per nine. 18 home runs given up. One of the issues that you saw last year was his velocity wasn't the same as it was in college. In college, he sat 94-95, could touch 97 on the fastball. In the pros, it's very much been 90-92, maybe 93, touching 95. So it's got good carry up in the zone. It's got good cut. But the fastball just had a ceiling on it as far as effectiveness because of the velocity. Now, his big thing, his go-to secondary is the changeup. It's a plus pitch. He throws it around... 80 miles an hour or so. It gets a ton of swing and miss when he throws it for a strike. And then it gets a lot of like just gross looking swings when uh, when he drops it below the zone. I really like the velocity separation between the two. Again, we're looking for about 10 miles an hour difference between the fastball and the changeup. Ideally, like at minimum, this has closer to 13 or 14 miles an hour velocity difference, but it comes out of the same slot. He also improved with his slider. It was a below average pitch. He started throwing it harder. It's now somewhere, instead of sitting 82, 83, it's somewhere around 85, 86, sometimes 87. And so it's in that middle band between the changeup and the fastball versus being pretty close to where the changeup was. The actual movement profile isn't mind-blowing, but he commands it very well. And so that's kind of why Jared Schuster was seen as a a promising back-of-the-rotation guy. Uh, Doesn't walk a ton of guys, 2.5 walks per nine last year. Career in the minor leagues, he's around 6.8 or 7%. So doesn't walk a ton of guys. In spring training so far, he had thrown 12 and two-thirds innings, 16 strikeouts, so 11.4 per nine, to two walks, so 1.4 per nine, with only one home run. The opponent quality allowed was 7.6. His... His competition for that spot has come down to Dylan Dodd. 2021 third rounder out of Southeastern Missouri, 6'3", 210. And last year, 26 games started between high A, double A, and a single game in Gwinnett in the regular season, triple A Gwinnett. 336 ERA and 142 innings pitched, 
153 strikeouts, so 9.7 per nine, to 31 walks, two walks per nine, 10 home runs allowed. Does a lot of similar stuff to what Schuster does as far as has a fastball with modest velocity. He throws a four-seamer to two-seamer both. The fastball sits 92 or 93, touches 95 to 96. The four-seamer doesn't actually have a ton of that carry up in the zone, but the but the the two-seamer does do a really good job of inducing weak contact. He's he's using those instead of having an amazing changeup, he's using those to set up the slider and the change, and it's very much a pitchability sequencing game for Dylan Dodd, more so than just pure stuff. Uh, the slider is, I it's average. I think I think I think it could be above average to plus. Uh, he throws it for strikes really well, and the command of it helps. The changeup, kind of a same scenario, where it sits in the low to mid 80s. I do want to see one of these pitches change. Maybe it's like Schuster where he throws the slider a little bit harder so they're not in the same velocity band because ideally you're going to have three separate pitches with three separate movements and three separate velocities to make it as hard as possible for a pitcher to catch up on it. Uh, And I think that's probably the key. It looks like the slider has been a little bit harder this year, this spring. And so I think that's that's kind of been the key to why he's been so effective. In the four games he's pitched, 0.69 0.69 ERA, 13 innings pitched, 15 strikeouts, so 10.4 per nine, better than his minor league number last year. Two walks, so 1.4 per nine, better than his minor league numbers last year, with one home run allowed, opponent quality of 7.6. Either way, uh, I like what both of these guys have done. Obviously, we trust Atlanta to develop pitching prospects. We know what Atlanta can do. And so... Really interested to see. This is really the only position battle left on this roster now is who is the fifth starter. So it's going to be interesting to see what happens there. Kyle Wright, who led the league in in wins last year, had a sore shoulder and had a cortisone injection in January. He didn't make his first start of the year until Monday. So he has timing for one more spring training start and one minor league start before he would make his first appearance in the back half of that first road trip that Atlanta's taking. There's an outside chance that maybe he's not ready and both these guys make the roster. But either way, I'm confident one of these guys will debut on the roster uh, on opening day. Fantastic week this week. We still have some draft stuff coming up for you later this week. So stay tuned for that. In the meantime, if you have questions for the show, I'm on Twitter at Crosby Baseball. Show's on Twitter at Locked on Farm. You can email us, LockedOnMovieProspects at gmail.com or Drop your questions in the Locked In Movie Prospects Discord. Links in the episode description, links in the show notes. Until tomorrow's show, remember, it's always a good time to pay a minor leaguer.